on a wonderful uh, some sunny saturday now it's time for us to go discuss something about beer brewing thank you very much for joining last week we had a session on wine brewing about 200 uh, 229 229 visitors joined us on this session today we have already about 70 uh, 70 people who have confirmed their attendance let's see how many people joined up uh, by the uh, if you are late don't worry about it we will be recording this video and it will be available on the website arishtam.com as well as on the arishtam facebook page for uh, for you if uh, as we uh, i would like to repeat this will be covering the secure session it will be covering the 14 odd questions that the visitors have been po posting on arishtam uh, on the various uh, various problems that they were facing to, uh, towards the brewing if you have more questions do feel free to use the uh, comment section of this video link and um, uh, ask the questions we will try to in either answer it in during the session or incorporate it as part of the next month's uh, session uh, and just to tell you next week we'll be having a session on turbo wine so turbo turbo wine is a, yeah i'm here so it's yeah so uh, so it will be on the uh, on the turbo wine turbo wine would be a kind of an instant wine which you can convert into a good 18 percent alcohol over the course of 2 to 3 days so it is good for the festival season wherein you have a, uh, you have a last moment uh, party plan and you have nothing much to serve so you can you can uh, um, uh, serve your wines or your cocktails uh, in a jiffy so now back to business we'll be talking about beer brewing so let's go the first question is from amit malt extract versus malted grains now you can uh, most of the microbreweries and the regular beer brewing uh, um, uses malt uh, malted grains what is a malted grain malted grain is simple you take jaw jaw this uh, there's two kinds of jaws six rows jaw and um, six row barley and two row barley in hindi it's called jaw uh, various languages it's called uh, different things it's a 5000 year old process what they do is a very simple thing they soak it in the water when they soak into the water the seeds start germinating when you know, the sprout which is ankur by the way ankur is also my name uh, in case you have forgotten so uh, once uh, once the sprout uh, the sprout on the endosperm has started forming the uh, it starts releasing enzymes these enzymes is what we, what we require so once the enzymes have been released what we do is we roast it when we roast it we like depending upon which kind of a malt you are using it will be lightly kiln which will be pilsner uh, pilsner malt pale ale malt those kinds of light malt to something which would be munich vienna which would be a lot more da darker in colors to something which is really burnt which would be like uh, peat malt black malt chocolate malt those kinds of malts so you can make, from the single same type of barley you can make about 60 70 different kinds of malted grains so th that is the process you could uh, you could malt it at home which a lot of people do specifically those who are doing wheat beers they are doing corn beers they are doing uh, sorghum which is jowar bajra yeah, uh, uh, even ragi beer so they uh, since those commercial malts are not available uh, they would be uh, sprouting ragi sorghum at home and they would be uh, making malt from there or you could buy commercial malt wheat malt rye malt and barley malt they are available commercially or uh, the third option could be you can go uh, go ahead and use dry malt extract now dry malt extract is something which somebody in the industry has done it for you you don't have to worry too much about it what they have done is they have malted the grains that's the step 1 after malting the grain they have created the wort wort is nothing but um, a kind of a sacrification process it's a 2 to 3 hour long sacrification process in which we heat uh, uh, along with water we heat uh, we first crush the grains then we soak them in water which is called the wort and then we heat it to an appropriate temperature over 3 hour period during this 3 hour period all the, the enzymes gets activated they start attacking on the starch most of the grains are filled with starch so they start attaching attaching the starch and converting them into maltose maltodextrins and various kinds of uh, various kinds of soluble sugars now that is called the entire process of malt making uh, we uh, since this is a basic class we will not be covering malt making okay anyway um, uh, 
anyways so yeah uh, coming back right so uh, so somebody has made the uh, wart for you and after that what they do is they spray dry the wart they pass it through the sprayers like you do like you make the milk powder even the tang which is the orange powder like that you can make the wart powder that <coughs> Uh, it's just uh, uh, sneezing because it's a dusty environment. Don't worry. Uh, you are safe. I'm safe. Yeah. Anyways, so we have questions from Devesh and Piyush. Uh, Devesh and Piyush, we will be covering those questions towards the end of the session. If um, that's okay, let's cover uh, the, uh, the 14 questions from the cu customers who, who had sent it prior. So we'll be covering in this. We have recorded your questions. Thank you. Yeah, coming back, right? So the uh, the malt extra uh, the malt extra uh, extract is sprayed right, like the uh, like your milk powder. When you again dissolve it in water, it will you can create the bond. So uh, most of the amateurs prefer, and a lot of the home brewers prefer malt extract. It is simple, it is easy, and it is just uh, open. Uh, you, you cut it open, you pour it, you mix it, and you are good to go. So the so it's again uh, based on your choice. Another reason why a lot of uh, professional brew, uh, you know, brewers um, you know, go for uh, grains rather than the malt extract is A, uh, uh, it is uh, closer to the, what the industry uses, B, there's a lot more variety when it comes to uh, uh, the grains because you uh, how you control the temperature, how you control the time duration, you can change the profile of your beer a lot. So they would like to get into those nitty gritties and they would like to perfect their recipe. So that's the reason why they go for it. For you, if you are, all you want to do is make your first beer, make it really simple, then don't bother about all those things. Take it. Uh, the malt extract is designed for la uh, light beers, light color beers. The color of the beer comes from the mal malted grains, but we will be covering to the, uh, the base questions uh, to towards the end. Uh, end. Yeah. So that's the question number one. Now let's move into the question number two, which is the temperature control. Now temperature control is very important. Now beer is one thing wherein based on the temperature that you have posted, uh, your, your, your profile is going to change drastically. So uh, first comes, you must have heard about the word called lager. What is a lager? Well, lager is, um, I will, uh, towards the end of this uh, session, I will be posting you the details about the lager. But lager is a beer that is made at extremely low temperatures. When you say extremely low temperatures, the fermentation temperature ranges between 4 degrees to 10 degrees. Maybe it can go up to 15 degrees Celsius, but rarely beyond that. Except for um, uh, brief diacetyl rest and those things. However, when it comes to the ale brewing, the ale is the oldest form of beer. Uh, most of the um, uh, British beers, the, the stouts and the porters, those are ale style beers. So when we come to the ale style beers, they are at a higher temperature. Higher means does not mean that the Indian higher temperature, higher relatively higher temperature. So higher temperature means 15 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. All beer yeast, right? We have various kinds of beer yeast. All beer yeast have their own specified temperatures ranges mentioned on them. Uh, and um, the profile, the kind of the aroma flavors, the esters that is formed, the banana notes, the clove notes, whatever is formed, depends upon the temperature control. So if you want to take your art to the professional levels, yes, do invest into a thermostat. Thermostat, by the way, is not so expensive. It's a very simple electronic device. You can buy it in Amazon, you can buy it anywhere, and you can hook your refrigerator, your temperature control equipment to that. If you don't want to invest that much also into it, uh, in the summers, uh, you can use a small kind of a water cooler. Uh, there, uh, so you can do uh, something called an evaporative cooling, so, which is nothing but you, uh, like you have this uh, uh, air cooler for your rooms. Like that, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, get the uh, water uh, dripped all across your fermenter. And as the water drips across your fermenter and your fan is on, it gets evaporated. It cools uh, cools down the entire thing. So the heat from the metabolism uh, is, is um, taken away and it is fermented out. Okay, so that's about the temperature control. Uh, high temperature brews. So if you are brewing at uh, 30 degrees Celsius or higher, then there is a chance that you will get a lot of off flavors. A, uh, you will get um, uh, some fusel alcohol which is uh, which is formed which can give you hangover and a bad uh, bad aftertaste so uh, try to maintain the temperatures most of your recipes will mention the fermentation temperatures 
Okay. Now uh, let's move on to the next question. Next question is from David. Why Bangalore has the most number of microbreweries? Well, microbrewery culture started in Pune, but first bottle beer was made in uh, 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 in Bangalore. Uh, you know, Bangalore was a, a, a was an old British colony. Being uh, so, a lot of regimental people were there, and IPA you must have heard about Indian Pale Ale. So Indian Pale Ale was were the specific kind of beer styles that was very hoppy, that was made to, uh, that had hops inside them as a preservative for for them to survive the long voyage all the way from London to India. Now, since a lot of British soldiers were stationed in Bangalore. The pale ale culture really grew up, and uh, uh, and there uh, there were there were a lot of uh, bottle uh, beer industry also in Bangalore, so from which there was um, access to good uh, manpower. You know uh, the bio uh, biocon CEO. She was a, uh, her her father even she uh, in a college degree was a professional brewer. So that's kind of a very good skilled workforce that was available in Bangalore, and those skilled workforce club with a good demand. Created a very healthy environment for Bangalore to be there. Pune was another British colony, and that's one of the reasons why Pune also has a very active brewing culture. So these two have a very strong brewing culture. But that's only about beer brewing, All right? Barley beer brewing. If you go to other brewing styles like rice beer, rice beer, I think we have two two kinds of there. So uh, Bangalore Pune don't have very good quality rice beer. When I say rice beer, it's a traditional sake style or the oriental style of rice beer. Um, you will find uh, uh, very good of them in Meghalaya, in Shillong, Assam, so northeast region. They have the traditional knowledge of making rice beer. So depending upon which style of beer you are looking for, you will um, yeah, you will have uh, different regions have a different favorite, different hotspot. So I hope David, I answered your question. Now comes a very important question: Is how do you create this? Man, that's a question that I get all the time, every time. Wait a minute, I'll just help you out. Yeah, so what is fizz? Let's start with the basics, right? What is fizz? By the way, I got some empty bottles for you to explain to you. Okay, so for fizz, you require a couple of things. The item number one that you require, item number one that you require is a vessel which a bottle which has an airtight lid on top of it and you can pick and choose different kinds of airtight lids so they are very good uh, pet bottles which are there in the market uh, i don't like pet bottles because they are not aesthetically pleasing but you can get those soda bottles those um, uh, screw type soda bottles they can retain this space for a very long period or you can uh, you you can get crown caps there's also swing type bottles let me see if i can i have it here in the workshop Just a minute, please. Uh, I don't have a screw type um, uh, out here, but I was able to find a soda bottle. Yeah, here's a soda bottle that I was talking about, right? So you, you can get them. Try to get the soda ones because the soda ones don't have a flavor in them. So, yeah, and it has a very tight cap with them. So that is one bottle that you can use. The flip type bottle would be a bottle with a metal wire on top on top of it that you'll find in most of the restaurants. Yeah, I know restaurants is uh, is twenty nineteen, but yes, you can get, get those restaurant bottles, which has a screw type. They also have a kind of a plunger which can hold a lot of pressure. So any of the th these three style of bottles or uh, or any bottle that you can find which can hold pressure is what you require. So that will lock in the carbon dioxide. Now the dissolved carbon dioxide as it gets Poured in the glass, it gets uh, it gets liberated, and with them, because of the surface tension, you get a little bit of foam. So that is one important step. Second step is carbon dioxide. How do you get the carbon dioxide? Now there are various ways to do that. One uh, one way would be during the fermentation process, a lot of CO2 is generated. You can trap that CO2 back. How do you trap the CO2 back? You for that you need something called a uni tank. U N I uni T A N K uni tank. So uni tanks are vessels. Um, yeah, uh, which can hold hold your pressure. So one kind of unit tank would be the conical fermenters that you see in most of the microbreweries. There'll be the big things which has a small uh, and, uh, and a tapering conical bottom and uh, bottom funnel at the bottom. So those are the conical fermenters. And if they are pressure 
they are rated for pressure, then you can use them. Or you can use a keg. Okay. This is a keg. Uh, just, yeah. This is a keg. This would be the front of a keg. Yeah. So you can use a keg. Keg is a, a nice pressure vessel. It, this can hold 120 PSI. 120 PSI, your car tire is filled at 30 PSI. So that's four times a car tire. And um, yeah, it has a wide, uh, wide lid and uh, mouth, which ma makes it easy to clean. You can attach your connectors. Just a minute, I'll just show it to you. Yeah, you can attach your connectors here. So, uh, so uh, it's written, right? Out, out is written, out is a liquid connector. And in where it is written, that's a gas connector. So you can attach your connectors and you'll be good to go. If you don't want to invest because it's a first beer, you can take a simple format. Okay. This is a very simple format. Okay. Once your beer is done, what we'll do is we are going to, uh, uh, we, uh, we are going to bottle it into a bottle. After bottling into a bottle, we are going to add some priming sugar, about one fourth to half a teaspoon. We sell in hundred gram packets. Hundred gram packets is good for about a, a, a good forty liters, about sixty to hundred pints. You can easily uh, fill in. So a uh, um, hundred pints of uh, um, beer. So you just add about half, one fourth to half a teaspoon, depending upon how much carbonation you want. And once and then you seal it. I'm going to talk about how do you seal it uh, once more because that's another very question uh, question that a lot of people are asking. I did receive questions from uh, Sandeep and uh, Chetan, uh, uh, Lansun. Um, uh, please hold on. After, after this uh, after this session, after the end of this 14 sessions, 14 questions that we had posted about an hour ago, let's finish those questions and then we will be covering your questions as well. Okay, coming uh, coming back, right? So how how are you going to do it? So just to show you, I, these were the bottles that we crimmed in the last, which was the last session last Saturday, which was talking about sparkling ciders, apple ciders, and um, cider champagnes. So you can use the same process here. I'm going to open this bottle. Then this is a, a we, we have two kinds of a bottle crimper this is a more portable uh, inexpensive one this is called the butterfly capper and then there's a uh, heavier bench capper which is a black color which has a big liver uh, it's that's a one hand operation this is unfortunately is a two hand operation uh my phone please okay so this is here now for uh, the next thing that you would need is crown caps and this let me Okay, you can get these blank crown caps. Wait a minute. Yeah, these blank crown caps. All right, you can get them in Amazon. Aristam also keeps them. Try to get ones which uh, which are silver, not the metal painted ones. Uh, and then later on, you can uh, uh, since these are blank caps, you can paint them later based on your style. Okay, then here what you can do is there's a magnet here. You can see there's a magnet. With the magnet, you can hold the crown cap. This is a bottle. Let me take another bottle just to show you. This was a crimp that we made last time. Okay. Now I'm going to attach this bottle here. Okay. And then I hope I'm visible, right? Then all you need to do is you press it and you push it down once you push it down make sure uh, that the uh, uh, bottles and the, these groups uh, uh, groups set in and you can see voila a very strong sealess bed perfectly crimped now you, now you can attach a beautiful label to uh, label to it uh, you can personalize this message or whatever you want to put in and now you have a nice present for your friend Okay, so just to repeat, to get a good fizz, you require um, uh, uh, the, on the for a, for an amateur to get a good fizz, what you require is one dissolved carbon dioxide. How do you get the dissolved carbon dioxide? By adding some priming sugar to it. One, 
The second thing what you require, uh, 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 what you require is a sealed bottle, which retains a carbon dioxide. If your carbon dioxide seeps away, then there's no fizz left. It's like the soda. Okay, so these two things are required. Apart from that, yes, we we sometimes alter the alter the kind of malts that we use. We sometimes add wheat to it. We add oat to it. Those are things which will increase the kind of a head. You would have seen that the wheat beers tend to have a more foam in them for the same level of carbonation compared to the barley beer. Then uh, some uh, IPAs also have a higher thing because the hops, the hops um, uh, play around with the surface tension. They lower uh, they. Uh, they lower the surface tension which means that uh, uh, more phases generated so uh, uh, how your your recipe also you can alter but recipe alteration is done by mature people uh, people uh, professionals for you uh, you can generate uh, very good results by just following these two steps okay now comes to the next question when do you add hops what is hops yep there's a packet of hops here uh, uh, Aristam.com carries about 17 different kinds of hops. If you uh, if you need uh, more hops, you can just Google it. You'll uh, uh, there are tons of um, online stores which are available which are, which are stocking their own hops. By the way, just to mention, Arist uh, we are running uh, running a kind of a promo. So if you order 100 grams of hops, you get 150 grams. This is a 150 gram packet. If you order for 25 grams, you get 25 grams extra. So you get 50 grams. So you can uh, you can choose your packets and uh, yes. Hops are expensive, but it is a part of it. It gives you the aroma, the smell of the beer, and it also gives you the uh, uh, gives you the uh, gives you the bitterness that is required. So that's the reason why I like IPA is a hoppy beer. But uh, hops are not the only thing that you can do. That's the next question, which is then, can I use spices? And um, can I use spices? Okay, why do you need spices? Okay. So now the, uh, you must have heard about the wheat beer. Most of the wheat beers tend to have two spices in them. First would be the orange peel. Now the orange peel is the orange zest. Orange is in season. You can scrape off the orange uh, uh, using a grater, fine grater. You, uh, you can uh, scrape off the orange coating on top of it. That's the region which has the maximum number of um, uh, this um, oil, orange oil. Um, uh, and the, um, the with this orange oil, when you add it to your brew, you will get nice orange uh, flavors and aromas to your beer. The uh, second spice, which is very commonly used, would be coriander. Indians, uh, so coriander is also used in the wheat beer. So these two uh, uh, beers are made using uh, using hops along with you know, along with some other spices that are commonly available in the Indian kitchen. Apart from that, if you want to make something called a spicy beer, then uh, that uh, the one that I really like is a Christmas uh, Christmas pumpkin ale, which is uh, in which we add roasted pumpkin. Roasted pumpkin has a very nice aroma to it. So you can add the roasted pumpkin, and when you add the roasted pumpkin, then you can add a lot of the Christmas um, uh, Christmas spices. When you say Christmas spices, you're talking of cinnamon, you're talking of cloves, you're talking of even star anise. You can add in. I've had some uh, a very good beer last week, which had kangura leaves into it, drumstick leaves into it. So like that, you can pick and choose what spices you want. I, there was one spice uh, beer that I still, which had tulsi inside that. Tulsi is something that we like in the winter season. So tulsi you can add. Uh, uh, somebody had even add methi ka dana. So methi is fenugreek. So fenugreek seeds is a little bit bitter. They had added that for the bitterness. Uh, the recipe was still, I would say, needed some refinement. But the whole idea is you can add a lot of spices, and with that you can make a really good indigenous um, um, re recipe. After all, craft beer is all about craft, which means you make something which is as per your taste, as per your aspirations. It's like buttermilk. I keep on referring to the uh, buttermilk. Same set of ingredients. If you make it. Your buttermilk will taste very different from how your sp spouse would make it, how your mother will make it, how your sister will make it. So all four people use the same ingredients, but the taste comes out differently. Why? It's because of the spices. It's because of the simple ratios. So don't go, don't follow a recipe to the letter. Be try to question why you are doing any uh, anything and how you can customize it. Next question is from Gautam. Why is my beer turning red? Now red beer. Uh, yeah, you can uh, see there are some style like the imperial red beer which in which you want the red color to be there but if you if in red color is not something that you aspired for but you got it 
most likely it is happening because of ketal caramelization. So ketal caramelization is basically a malt which are stuck at the bottom. They they uh, they got roasted too much when they got uh, uh, during the two hour boil heating process. You did not stir it properly. So yeah, because of too much of heat at a very for a very long period, uh, the color of your um, malt changed. And charred malt or okay, charred malt or ketal caramelized malt is one of the uh, red color is one of the signs of char uh, ketal charring or ketal caramelization. So my recommendation to you would be if you if your hop cycle requires for 60 minutes, then don't put all the malt at one go. You can put in small quantities of malt initially so that only that small quantity gets charred or ketal caramelized. The rest 80-90% of the malt is safe with you. You can go through the 60 minutes hop cycle. Yes, I forgot to tell you. Hop, uh, there was another question. So since we are at that question, when to add hops? Now, uh, your recipe will tell you when to add hops. But typically, there are three, um, three durations at which hops are added. So first duration would be an early boil. So early boil, which means 60 minutes prior to flame off. So we heat or boil the hops for 60 minutes for the bitterness to come out. So if you have a high alpha hops, most of the hops will have the alpha AA. We'll have the alpha AA rating on top of it. So if you have a high alpha hops and you want to uh, extract the maximum bitterness out of it, you are going to heat them for 60 minutes. In the 60 minutes boiling, the hops get isomerized. And when they get isomerized, you, uh, you are locking in the bitterness. Then there is something called a late bo uh, late boil. So late boil depends upon uh, uh, 15 minutes to 20, uh, 5 minutes to 20, 15, 20 minutes before the flame off. You add them uh, the hops which uh, in which you want to travel. Uh, you are adding for the aroma. So uh, that is uh, that is the time when you uh, that's called the late hops. Certain hops are very delicate. And that you, what you do is dry hop. So most of the noble hops that we talk about, we do a dry hopping, which means that in the fermenter, we add those hops. And we add the hops really late. No heat is applied. So the, um, uh, the aromas don't get lost. The bitterness don't get extracted. And what you get is a nice, pleasant aroma of the hops. Hops are very aromatic for you. They are one of the most expensive spices. And yes, one of the most talked about spices in the country. So uh, these are the three time durations. Now based, uh, so for the first for one or five beers, I would recommend you that you f uh, follow to the letter what is to be co covered. And uh, towards the later on, you uh, what you can do is there. Uh, Ashwarya had one question. So since it's linked to the previous one, adding sugar to generate this, yes, you can use priming sugar, you can use honey, you can use liquid glucose, you can use uh, dextrose, uh, yes, the, um, uh, you can use stable sugar, sucrose also. Each of them, uh, I've had somebody who is using jaggery as well. So yeah, it depends upon you what sugar you add. Priming sugar is a safe bet because if you, when you taste it also, priming sugar does not have enough taste. With it. Jaggery, uh, jaggery has a very strong taste associated with it, which some people may not like. Uh, honey is something which a lot of people like. So when you are making something which has a citrus note to it, a little bit of honey uh, uh, complements with it. So in wheat beer, I do add uh, honey to it. Uh, the tulsi or the basil beer that I make, I do add honey to it. So you can choose what kind of beer, uh, what kind of uh, sugar source you want to use. Priming sugar, table sugar, honey, depending upon you. But the ratio remains almost the same. Um, Half to one fourth teaspoon per pint. Pint is a small, small bottle, three thirty ml bottle. Okay, so okay, coming back to the list of questions. Uh, I'm sorry, it's thirty minutes and we have only covered six or seventh question. So now uh, we are going to the eighth question, which is a simple beer recipe. That should answer a lot of your questions. If it doesn't, just do, do that. Simple beer recipe. What you do is you take a bhagona. Okay. Uh, uh, you can get an expensive kettle also, but if you don't want to invest in an expensive kettle, you can get a nice large bhavana from your kitchen that is good enough for most of the purposes. Okay? It's a hobby. Please remember, hobby does not mean that you have to break the bank. Try to try to improvise as much as possible. Indian jugaad works. Okay? Don't worry about that. Okay, coming back, right? So you can use a, a nice kettle. You can add some, hop, uh, some malt to it. 
So malt comes in this one packet. On the malt, it will be written how much is there. So one kg malt is good. For, uh, malt extract is good for about eight liters. If you are using grains, then one kg of grains will get, is good for about uh, five liters approximately, depending upon how much ABV you want. You can go plus and minus. But on a rough rule of thumb is eight um, eight liters of beer for every kg of malt extract and five, li uh, five liters of beer for every kg of uh, four to five liters for every kg of malt grains. So that much is there. You can play around with the calculators. A lot of brewing calculators are there, which will do that. The color of your beer comes completely from the malt. malt. So based on what malt you choose, you will alter the color of your beer. Next comes the hops. Don't use a whole hop uh, packet. Uh, if you are not sure what to use, go uh, uh, yeah, start with about half a gram to, to one third of a gram per liter. And later on, you can always uh, uh, add more hops in the next uh, next batch or the batch after that. Uh, if you are not sure uh, how much hops to be there, most of the hops will have AA written on them. Use the AA calculator. So there's something called a Tinsel IBU, I, um, which is international. B for bitterness and U for unit, IBU calculator. So those IBU calculators would be available online. And with that calculator, you can estimate how much bitterness you would get. Uh, Indians typically like something which is about five to seven IBU range. So that's for the light uh, light beers, the sweeter, uh, sweeter variety of beers. When it comes to the IPA or the very bitter beer, you can go as high as 30, 30 or sometimes even more, but 30 IBU would be a safe bet. But Make a uh, low bitter beer first and later on you can always play, play around with the spices. You have to understand your baseline first. Okay. You add everything to your bhagona and you heat it. Okay. Uh, uh, if you if you want more aroma, then, uh, then uh, uh, boil the whole thing for about 20 minutes. If you want more bitterness, then you'll have to uh, heat the hops for about 16 minutes. If you are looking for more bitterness, then what I will do is I will not add all the malt beforehand. I will add only one fourth of the malt. Let the hops get uh, isomerized or the bitterness gets extracted from it. And then later on uh, in the last five, 10 minutes, I'll add the rest of the malt extract powder. Okay. Uh, so once you have created your wort, which is, uh, which is your dissolved solution uh, with malt and hops uh, 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 in it, it's called a wort. It's, it's a very sweet, uh, sweet liquid. Once you've created that, you have to put that into an ice bath. If it's small quantity, you can put that into ice bath. If it's a large quantity, you get those water chillers. It's it's a big, big coil which are there. You can purchase them, and with those water chillers, you can uh, uh, cool uh, cool down your water fast. Otherwise, just uh, take the bhagona, take the bhagona. Put into an ice bath. If you are uh, a, tub, a tub, can be a nice, uh, nice ice bath. If you are not, if you don't have a tub also with you, then if, what you can do is you can take an old T-shirt or an old rag, um, uh, choke your uh, drain of your kitchen sink, put ice in it, uh, uh, put your uh, put your bhagona inside that, and allow allow it to cool it. So I find out a way in which you can do that. So after, uh, so with that you have lowered the temperature. After lowering the temperature, you add yeast. Okay, most important thing. Okay, we have various, various kinds of, three different kinds of yeast with us. Uh, the uh, different yeasts are for different purposes. This is rice, rice yeast, those were beer yeast, this is turbo yeast, then we have wine yeast. You have to uh, go to the yeast page. Uh, just a minute. Yeah, that's one of the questions. So good. So I'm not going out of syllabus now. So you, you can pick up uh, yeah, any of the um, um, yeast. All the yeast page will have the yeast profile mentioned on it. The kind of a recipe that it um, uh, gels with it. Make sure that you pick up an yeast which corresponds or which is as close to your recipe as possible. That way, the profile will be exact. Now, the three yeast, um, yeast that we have, let me just quickly walk you through them. Okay. So, just a minute. So, uh, to check the yeast profile, you have to go to arishtum.com. In the arishtum.com, you have to go to shop online. And so inside the shop online, there is something called ingredients for home brewing. Inside the ingredients for home brewing, you have brewer's yeast. So, therein you'll find a whole uh, list of plethora of yeast that are there. 
So the first is that we are talking about is CN36. CN36 is mentioned on the website that th this is used for stouts, porters, and anything which is very, very high alcohol. It's one of the highest alcohol yeast available in the Indian market. Then the second would be CS31. CS31 is for the be uh, wheat berries. So if you're making something which is using wheats, rice, uh, corn to some extent, something which is non-barley, then this is the B um, yeast that I would go with. You have to remember that this yeast has also the capability of producing some enzymes, which will um, lead to some uh, nice aromas. Then, uh, uh, then comes to the uh, uh, to the third, uh, which is BF th uh, thirty one. Say BF sixteen. This is a lager yeast. So lager yeast means we earlier talked about temperature control. This is for low temperature fermentations. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, now you uh, uh, on, on the uh, back of the yeast, uh, all the directions and everything would be mentioned. Uh, what, uh, we we rarely add the yeast directly to the bond. What we do is we hydrate the yeast. So for that, what we do is if this is a 12 gram packet of yeast, we are going to take 120 ml of water. 120 ml is half a glass of water. We take a half a glass of water. We make sure that all the equipment is sterilized, so you can heat it, boil it, and cool it down, so that the uh, the vessel as well as the water is sterilized. Then you add some malt extract to it, which uh, uh, which can be used as a priming sugar as well. You add some malt extract to it uh, and some yeast nutrients if you require, not compulsory. And uh, so half a teaspoon of malt extract you add it. You you pour in the whole packet and you wait for about 10-15 minutes. After 10-15 minutes, you would see that um, uh, a lot of foam is generated on the top. That means the yeast is active. It's very similar to in the baking, uh, when what we call as proofing of the yeast. So you, what you're doing is a very simple process. I always recommend you to proof the yeast. The reason is you know at, at that step itself whether your yeast is alive or it's dead. If you sprinkle it on the board, then you have to wait for about two days before you realize whether the yeast is working or not. And by the time, it might be too, a little bit too late and you've lost two days of your time. So it's better to test it out before you do it. So you put it there, then you can transfer it to your fermenter. Now, I am going to start with the expensive fermenter and then I'll move to a simpler fermenter. So this is a fermenter. This is a 30 liter fermenter that we have on the website. It's called the flat bottom fermenter because it's a flat bottom fermenter. It has two lids on top of it. The, uh, this is a flat lid with um, with uh, with two ports. These ports are if you want to draw samples, do dry hopping, all those sorts of things. This will help you out. And these um, these caps are the standard uh, standard caps. Your soda bottle caps will also fit into that. Yes. And this is a second ring, which will make it really airtight. On top of it, um, there's a water level marker. This is a sticker. You can stick it here. Uh, it's mentioned uh, how to stick it so that you can measure the, the water level content. And this is a temperature strip. It'll, um, uh, you can see it will illuminate based on what temperature it is. Right now it is 30 degrees, so showing 30 degrees. If I keep it in my hand, you can see the temperature keeps on rising. So only the, uh, only the temperature will grow. You pour your bot inside. You make sure that there's only um, about two inches of head space. You don't have to go for a very large vessel. You can bottle, uh, you can ferment in a small bottle as well. And you close the lid. And then you attach an airlock. There are two kinds of an airlocks with us. Where this is a three piece airlock which comes free with this fermenter. You attach this. Now, if you want to check whether the airlock is working, you press it. Hmm? Uh, if you're loaded with water and you press it, you can see that the airlock lifts away. This is a three piece airlock. It's much like the, uh, uh, in the kitchen, you have the uh, pressure cooker. So it's the same mechanism. You have this nozzle and on top of it, uh, you have a lid. And the second airlock that we have is, uh, is called an S-type airlock. Just a minute. Okay. Uh, just give me a minute. I'll get you an S-type airlock. This is the S-type airlock. You fill it half with water. When you fill it half with, uh, with water, it, it forms a barrier. So when the carbon dioxide comes in, it'll, uh, it'll push the water up and it'll, uh, the carbon dioxide gets released. But the outside air, which causes the oxidation, does not go inside. Now, a little bit of science here. So what the, uh, what the yeast does is, yeast does a very simple task. What it does is, it takes your, 
takes the maltose in this case or sugar so any form of sugar it takes it it metabolizes it now since the oxygen is not present uh, it will metabolize that into alcohol ethanol that that we want if the oxygen is there if you don't have an alcohol then the oxygen will come in and it will oxidize oxidize it so in that case the, the what the uh, yeast will do is rather than producing ethanol that we require it will produce acetic acid or vinegar it will make it sour and as simple as that so that is the reason why we take care of putting in an ale log how to use ale logs um, is there on the website alishram.com you can go to the there are about 200 um, yeah, free video tutorials uh, you can go there otherwise last week when we had the wine session we did cover the ale log so i'm not for the paucity of time i'm not covering that there but do let me know uh, in the comment section if you want that to be covered next is uh, 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 what is the minimum equipment needed to brew yes we did cover it uh, most of the equipment is already there you just need a very small 50 60 rupees a log and that's the only thing that you require uh, another thing that i will recommend you not essential would be a siphon uh, again we did cover the siphon last time as well so siphon is a mechanism uh, is a mechanism because when you pour, if you pour liquid uh, there's a lot of fishing swirling happening so a lot of oxygen gets dissolved but with the siphon um, uh, it is easy because it's going inside at you so there's no uh, there's no access to outside outside here so siphons uh, uh, work great in that regard okay so this is on this uh, equipment a simple beer so we we wait uh, after about two days or so you would start seeing the small small bubbles being formed the uh, uh, a log starting to bubble that's the reason why it's also called bubbler so the a log starts to bubble and you know that the fermentation has picked in it will go go around for about a week or so and after a week or so it will die down so once it has died down that mean that is the time when you know your fermentation is complete now what you do is you use a, your siphon how to use siphon is there on the website and it's also it was all also covered last week so i'm not repeating it uh, last week's video would be there on the uh, on the events arishtam uh, events or also on the facebook page just uh, check it out it was a wine making workshop so uh, you, you are going to pour it on the in the bottle and uh, and then uh, with the sealer we we talked about how to use a crown cap uh not essential but good to have so with the crown cap uh, you can you can seal the bottle and when you seal the bottle i i give a physics generated uh this week uh, we did not have a question about how to measure uh, measure the alcohol but if you have to measure the alcohol you require a triple scale hydrometer for that how to use that would be there's a video for that on the website so with that you can measure the alcohol concentration also because one of the first question your friends are going to ask is is me kick hai kya how much percentage of alcohol is there so those kinds of questions they'll be asking so it's good that if you have a measured scientific answer for that okay so i with this i covered the question number 8 and 9 i'm sorry if i'm going a little bit fast uh, question number 10 how much hops to use and which type we did cover that so this is there which beer is to use so which beer is there how to hydrate yeast we covered that can i uh, can i use bread yeast uh, no you cannot use bread yeast the reason is um, in the wort making process uh, what you have made is maltose now most of the yeast uh, are maltose negative which means they do not have the enzymes they do not they, uh, they do not have the capabilities and the genes to metabolize uh, the maltose there so beer yeast is very different from wine yeast or the baking yeast in the sense because they have the ability to make the enzymes have the capability to digest and maltose with them so that is the reason why uh, although technically you can use but you will not make something which is a great beer it will um, be sweet because uh, most of your maltose is not fermented out and you will end up with something which is very sweet you may not like it the last question that was there before we move to the uh, user questions which were uh, uh, typed uh, during the session would be can i visit your stores yes earlier we used to have re regular workshops once in a month we used to have a physical workshop now because of the covids the universities are closed colleges are closed the schools are also closed so we do we do not have the permission to conduct workshops right now that is the reason why we have restarted the online uh, medium uh but if you are looking for a personalized workshops uh we do conduct them for professional brewers we uh, we can help you probably with that as well however that being said uh, for most uh, for your first beer you do not require a professional workshop 
uh, you can go to aristim.com free video tutorials so there's a video tutorial section we're in close to about 200 video tutorials like this one would be mentioned there plus we intend to conduct very regular uh, regular webinars uh, we had one last week we are having one today next week will be on turbo uh, turbo yeast or turbo wine making so like that we'll be having regular uh, seminars at least we are trying to have it at least two or three times a month to help you out so and you can view the past video recordings which will help you out and there's tons and tons of material available on youtube there's tons and tons of material available on google pick what you want pick up any recipe end of the day it's your recipe it's a 5000 year old art go innovate a little bit as long as your basic safety basic hygiene basic process is covered you are golden don't worry about it now let's move on to the questions and we are going in the order so the uh, base question is there which malt to use to uh, get color like budweiser now yeah the, as i said the color of the beer comes primarily from the malt so the uh, uh, budweiser by the way uses rice heavily you can it's mentioned in the ingredients as well so if you are using rice uh, on the website you will see adjunct grain brewing adjunct a d j u n t so anything which is not barley not wheat is called adjunct grains specifically when they are not malted so adjunct grain uh, brewing is mentioned there so if you are using something like uh, like a lot of rice in, inside your beer uh maybe a uh, uh, maybe a, a corn then uh, then those those do not have so much color inside so you will get something which is very very light okay uh next is a question from uh, piyush uh piyush is how uh, how to make sure that brewing does not produce uh you know, poisonous alcohol like methanol ethyl glycerol and isopropyl alcohol well uh it's a 5000 year old art don't worry it's pretty safe all the methanol and the poisonous uh, um, uh, pr products that you're talking about they are usually produced during the distillation process and that is one of the reasons why government of india has banned home distillation you cannot distill alcohol at home for that you for distillation you require a license uh, by the way do visit uh, aishram.com there is a section called legal home brewing which um, which is a page which talks about what are the legal restrictions what is the quantity that you can make uh, how, why you should not go for any commercial activity because the moment you are doing commercial activity then you are breaking the law so you can do it as a hobby you can pursue it as a hobby but you cannot sell it you cannot market it you cannot talk about you cannot commercialize it as you as the moment you are commercializing it you will be under the excise jurisdiction and you need to obtain a license and you need to follow the norms accordingly so anyways coming back to pure question so when you do distillation you produce those poisonous active things as long as you are ensuring that your your yeast was sealed and it uh, it was hygienic your safety process is taken care of you are not distilling you be be assured it will be okay and if things do, do go bad then go back to your experience from making yogurt the yogurt goes bad it becomes poisonous the curd then when you smell it you will get a very foul smell right our our senses have been trained over centuries over millennia to weed out any poison okay please understand that so if it is not safe you will get a yucky feeling it will not smell raw it will smell like sewage water it will not smell like beer so you would know that no poisonous activity is produced uh the base question was can i use glucon d instead of priming sugar well look at the uh, constituents of glucon d glucon d is gluco uh, it's very little glucose but more to do with uh, with sucrose and some of them are also orange flavored and it has some colors and everything inside that we are what we are doing is a very standard original traditional process so yes in theory you can use glucon d but it, a safer bet would be to use a priming sugar to use honey to use malt extract those kinds of things to create the fizz uh, next is a, a question from sandeep uh, folks in case of microbrewery large breweries home distillation you can uh, industry skill distillations you could consult me for sure so sandeep yes thank you for offering your services yes we will love to consult you uh, next is a question from uh, Ch uh chetan chetan is an old colleague of mine he's uh, he's wishing me uh, best of luck by the way Ch uh, uh, just to mention Ch uh, chetan uh, is bringing farming and agriculture revolution in uh, uh, in bangalore in and around bangalore 
he has gone uh, he's left a very uh, very promising career in IT industry and now he's helping farmers he's conducting workshops he's trying to improve the farm uh, farming livelihood and sustainability there uh, Lanon Jami's question about training I did cover that so that's there Ashwarya's question about adding priming sugar uh, yes we did cover that so uh, so all those is covered uh, now is there any other question if not, then we'll be moving on. And uh, luckily, we still have about 10 minutes to spare. But good, we cover almost all your questions. Do uh, do email us at brewbrewbrew at the rate if you have any other questions. Thank you very much.